So we're going to have a look at some responsive adaptive design. And we'll start off with another polling question. In this case, uh, does your organization currently have a bring your own device policy? I'll just give people a moment to answer that. OK, so an interesting split there. Um, I think for anyone who does think that they are going to have a bring your own device policy in their organization, the adaptive and responsive con HTML content is very interesting because it does give us that develop once, run onto multiple platforms. So what are we talking about when we talk about responsive design? Well, it's, it's HTML. It's an emerging HTML standard. You will probably have seen it in web design. It's been around in web design for a while. And it allows you to develop an HTML page that will resize and reformat itself depending on the screen size that it's being, being run on. Responsive content responds to its environment. So I'll show you an example in a moment. But if you imagine a website, when you uh, minimize the website and you squish it down into a tall, narrow window, the content moves around for you. This is something that web design has done for a while. Learning has not. We've started to move into this space in, in, in terms of building e-learning courses that use responsive uh, content, and we've been able to develop and deliver them out to multiple platforms. So we'll have a look at a, an example of this now. And hopefully this is displaying on your screen. We're looking at a, a prototype of an online course using uh, responsive HTML. You'll see that we have a menu along the top. We have a series of questions, which I can click on to answer. And we have a, a button to move forward and a button to move backwards. Now, the interesting thing here is if I squish this screen across, you see that it starts to reformat. I go from having two rows of four to having four rows of two. You also notice that in the wider view, we have the menu running from left to right. When I squash this down, the menu disappears and it hides itself under a button. So what we're looking at now is pretty much what this would display as if you ran it on your iPhone. If you ran it on a desktop, it would automatically respond to that desktop screen, and it would know it should display itself uh, approximately in this way. So we're able to package questions, interactions, video, all the stuff you'd see in a, in a, in a typical e-learning course. Here's another great example. We have three pieces the content, three images, and, and associated text. And when I squish this down, it's going to reformat it. Instead of left to right, it's now top to bottom, and much more suitable for a phone. I'll leave you the link to this uh, prototype at the end of the call. You'll be able to have a play with it. If you take a look on an iPad, you'll also notice that if you flip the iPad from vertical to horizontal, the content will flip with it, and it will resize accordingly. And we have some questions in here. Interestingly, again, when we squish this down, we see that the text for the options will wrap to meet the, the new size. So what we're talking about is one build. And during that build, the templates that we use are optimized for the five or six devices that we know we need to hit. We put the code in that tells the templates to respond in a certain way when they meet a certain device. But after that, it's a single build, a single delivery. And all importantly, when we have to make updates, we update that main content once, and we republish once, and every device can read the new content. So it's, it's exciting stuff. OK. This is just a, a slide that outlines perhaps five of the key um, platforms and, and screen sizes that you would optimize that responsive HTML to meet. 